November 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Peter chapter 1 of the New Testament. From Simeon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have been granted a faith just as precious as ours. May grace and peace be lavished on you as you grow in the rich knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I can pray this because his divine power has bestowed on us everything necessary for life and godliness through the rich knowledge of the one who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through these things he has bestowed on us his precious and most magnificent promises, so that by means of what was promised, you may become partakers of the divine nature after escaping the worldly corruption that is produced by evil desire. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith excellence, to excellence knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly affection, to brotherly affection unselfish love. For if these things are really yours and are continually increasing, they will keep you from becoming ineffective and unproductive in your pursuit of knowing our Lord Jesus Christ more intimately. But concerning the one who lacks such things, he is blind, that is to say he is nearsighted, since he has forgotten about the cleansing of his past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort to be sure of your calling and election, for by doing this you will never stumble into sin. For thus an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be richly provided for you. Therefore, I intend to remind you constantly of these things, even though you know them and are well established in the truth that you now have. Indeed, as long as I am in this tabernacle, I consider it right to stir you up by way of a reminder, since I know that my tabernacle will soon be removed because our Lord Jesus Christ revealed this to me. Indeed, I will also make every effort that after my departure, you have a testimony of these things. For we did not follow cleverly concocted fables when we made known to you the power and return of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, we were eyewitnesses of his grandeur. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory. This is my dear Son, in whom I am delighted. When this voice was conveyed from heaven, we ourselves heard it, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic word as an altogether reliable thing. You do well if you pay attention to this, as you would to a light shining in a murky place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you do well if you recognize this, no prophecy of Scripture ever comes about by the prophet's own imagination, for no prophecy was ever born of human impulse, rather men carried along by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. God, there are times when I doubt my salvation. You know this, because we have this conversation. Um, everybody always makes passing comments to me about well, at least you know where you're going. Um, when you die, at least you'll go to heaven, uh, that you're saved. And all these people around me seem so sure that I am saved. But nobody truly knows if somebody else is saved except for that person and you and that relationship. And I would even go so far as to say that person isn't completely sure of their salvation, even with you, God. Um, and I think that's a healthy thing. I don't think that that's a bad thing. Uh, part of what Peter's talking about here and how amazing that it's Peter, Simon Peter, who who denied you um, right before you went to the cross. So I would suspect that if anybody would question their own salvation, it would be the person who denied you after saying that he would never do something like that. But here uh, Peter's talking about the fruit in your life. And what does that look like? And he has a list. And we know that there's other lists in the Bible, uh, especially Galatians 5, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Um, but we also know that Christians fall away, that that things happen, we become distracted, um, 
we're tempted and we choose to follow that temptation. Uh, we struggle with things just like our relationships here on earth. There's times where we feel really close to those people and times we feel really far away. And in knowing that, um, one of the things that I do in my life is I constantly go back to fruit as my indicator. And that's kind of what Peter's talking about is, yes, it helps um, God's kingdom, obviously, to show all of these different uh, features of your salvation. Uh, and it shows and reflects to other people your salvation, but it also helps you rest assured in the salvation that your son achieved for us. Even during those times where I'm really struggling with our relationship, God, uh, and I feel like I'm just a million miles away and, and, and very much doubt my salvation at those times, it's not that I believe I can lose my salvation. It's that wonder and concern, did I truly have it in the first place? And Peter's actually talking about this. Um, to make sure, to make every effort, as Peter puts it, of your calling and election. And so I use those when I am in that fog, when I can't seem to see anything straight and I don't have a whole lot to hold on to. I look for fruit in my life and it's probably not me producing the fruit at this time <laughs> because I'm so lost at that moment. But it's usually the projects that I've worked on up until that point uh, that you have allowed me to work on. And I look to those and I look for fruit in those. And if I see fruit in those, then I know that I was at least on the right track with those. And then you and I go through a reconciliation. Well, I do. You you never left. And, uh, you know, it involves repentance and uh, forgiveness and coming back into that relationship with you. So the list that uh, Simon Peter is talking about having to do with uh, faith, faith first and foremost leading to unselfish love, but in between excellence with knowledge, uh, self-control, perseverance, uh, godliness, and brotherly affection, and then of course unselfish love. Those are all things that I am striving for in my life, but they are also things that, as Peter explains, helps me rest assured in my salvation and allows me not to spend time worrying about my salvation, but just in moving forward with helping your kingdom. Um, I have been nearsighted a lot, as Peter puts it, um, and I've forgotten um, about what your son went through to remove my sins, to give me freedom, to give me eternal life. And it seems like such a silly thing to be able to forget that, but it's not so much that we've completely forgotten it. It's just we've become involved with things of the world, with our idols. Uh, and they have momentarily blinded us or distracted us uh, from the truth. God, if anybody is in that space right now where they feel really far away from you, where they're in that fog, where they're questioning their salvation. God, I just allow them to have that conversation with you of... Gosh, God, I'm really concerned about what's going to happen to me when I die. Uh, am I one of your elect? Uh, do I have a life in you? And, and allow them to really take a look at their life, take a look at their relationship with you. And if they truly haven't started a relationship with you, allow, allow them to take those first couple steps. Uh, give them the strength to do so. Put people in their lives to help teach them what those truths are. Uh, allow them to read those truths and have them resonate in their hearts. I know those foggy times are so incredibly hard and difficult to see any sort of truth whatsoever. But I also know that you put people in our lives during those times to help guide us uh, through that, that fog, through that tunnel to actually see the other side. God, I don't ever want to be blind or nearsighted or forget what your son and what you have done for me. I want to always remember and even though we have a very close relationship right now, I know in the future I'll probably mess that up again. And I just thank you so much for when those times happen of your pursuit of me, of always coming and getting me and showing me what I need to do to come back to you and come back into that relationship in full repentance, in full reconciliation, and moving forward with, with that amazing unselfish love that you teach us about. 
In your son's name I pray. Amen.